Welcome to the ABA Hair Challenge. I'm your host, Alain Audet. Tonight, we have a wonderful show for you, and we will be revealing challenge number two looks from our five contestants. But before we get into that, a reminder of what's at stake for our contestants. The winning contestants for each week will receive some amazing products to help build their own professional career. At the end of the five weeks, we will crown the first ABA Hair Challenge champion. The winner will receive one-on-one -on -one mentoring from one of our five expert mentors and over $15,000 in education and prizes from our five fabulous sponsors. Wow, I'm still amazed by this fabulous opportunity for these junior stylists. Well, let's get right into it. Our second challenge was dimensional color. Our contestants were each given the Lana mannequin head to bring their best color story to life with multicoloring from tone to tone to highlight techniques or a version of balayage. Showing off their creativity through color placement, the contestants were also allowed to trim or clean up the mannequin head as needed for their look. And of course, style the doll's head to ensure that the color story was presented in the best possible way. The final look was judged on overall execution, overall fashion look, artistic workmanship, and level of difficulty. All of the contestants submitted their videos and photos showing off their dimensional color looks. As always, we have kept the contestants look anonymous to provide the most fair critiques and feedback. Let's see what the mentors have to say. All right, mentors, let's look at contestant number one. So Lisa, what do you think about this contestant number one creation? I really um, was impressed that they kicked it up. It was a little bit more of a showpiece. So very impressive with that. Love the little detail with the eyelashes. Very, um, as a little bit of a critique, just again, to be mindful of the ends uh, on the hair. And um, one little tip, if, if you didn't use it or not when you were cutting the bang, uh, if you go in with a banger and use clippers, you can usually get that line quite sharp. It, it was impressive, but just to really kind of polish it up, that would be one critique that I would say, just be mindful of the ends again. And like I said, the color, I, I really like the color. So contestant number one, bravo for being brave. Fun, harmonious colors, love the bangs, placement was good. Would rather have had a smoother canvas to show the color placement better. Um, and the front face on was much better than the back view. So I did want a little bit more shine. I thought this was really creative. I thought they really pushed the envelope and, and got outside of the box and did something a little bit different. The color palette was beautiful. I think I saw four or five colors. I thought they were well chosen, well placed. Um, the balance was really nice from the front. I thought the dark blue in the fringe really complemented the, the design of the fringe. However, in the 360, the back section, uh, I felt a little bit dry, so the colors didn't really pop as much as they could have. I completely agree with the other judges, um, definitely. The wow factor was epic. When I saw contestant number one, that was the first picture um, I saw, the first mannequin, I was like, wow, this is really beautiful. And uh, likewise, my experience in competition, I know how challenging it is to rinse a mannequin head when you have some navy blue and some blonde right next to it. It could easily bleed. So uh, congratulations. That was really beautiful. Congratulations. Um, contestant number one, I really think you went the extra mile, went above and beyond, and really raised your game on last week. Um, I love your look. Um, as everyone else has said, I think you had a great selection of a color palette. I particularly liked how the color was placed in the fringe. I thought that was the strongest. Just a little tip from me, a kind of a word of advice is, when we're styling hair that's been colored, particularly in competition, be careful of kind of teasing the hair too much and having the hair too transparent and see-through. What that tends to do is kind of weaken the color message. Hence, the color was stronger in the fringe or it was a little bit smoother and flatter. 
Okay, now let's move on to contestant number two. And we will start with uh, Sophia. Congratulations, contestant number two. I loved the flame concept of the mannequin head. I thought it was very beautiful with the red and the orange and the yellow. Um, definitely a tip, as I said before, to contestant number one. Um, in order to get more contrast, because your look was on height, it was very tight around the sides and very high. If you want to maximize on height, you could play with your color, sort of tricking the eye. So a bit like when you're looking in a mountain and you see a cave, the depth of the cave is always darker. So it's a bit the same thing in hairdressing whenever you're creating a concept. So in order to make the height look even higher, even though it's going to be the same height, play with your color placement. So most definitely when you want to get darker colors, getting it tighter and then the lighter colors coming up a little bit. Well done, contestant number two. I loved your choice of colors. I thought they were fearsome. They were fantastic. Um, the only thing I would suggest is if you're going to do a plait through the sides, what you might want to do is do the plait first and then think about how are you going to place your colors so that the color really speaks to the style. Very well done on the color. Uh, I absolutely loved it. It was like a sunset. Uh, it really made me smile when I looked at it. Uh, I do agree with Sophia when she mentioned about the side with the uh, to make sure that your your sections are very very clean when you're doing any type of braiding uh, because it it can be distracting and if you're using the elastics to try and hide the elastic when you're you're pinning the hair. I thought this was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the color palette really, really popped. It was like there was a light bulb inside. And even with the texture throughout the center, I didn't mind, you know, that little bit of um, uh, a movement and volume that was there because the color still remained bright all the way to the ends. So I loved that. I would say hide the elastics, maybe a little, you know, metal detail, something that could really take it to that next level and um, maybe tighten up the braids as well. Just on the tight side, if you are going to do those little tiny uh, braids, you want to make sure that they're they're clean and tight all, all the way from the base out. Color was stunning. I, I really loved this look. I thought you did an amazing job. So contestant number two, fun style, expressive. Um, again, I would have rather had a little smoother for the purpose of color or at least an area showing color detail. Um, it's very hard to have shiny color and a lot of texture. Um, so one sort of needs to be the focal point when you're having a color as the focal point. One of the things I like to do when I'm creating that sort of very tight shape with the height is instead of braids, maybe next time try blowing it really tightly back um, and styling it so it's really flat to the head and then keep that elevated shape super smooth going right through smooth to the back. That's something we do a lot for photo shoots and for stage to feature color. Um, if not, if you really like going with the braid idea, I probably would have done the sides more of a solid color because it's very hard to see detail within the braids. But overall, it was a really great concept. So if you think you're recognized by the numbers, <laughs> Those numbers have been jumbled up. So the contestants are not in the same order than last week and our judges have no idea who did what. So now why don't we look at contestant number three? So Michelle Pargy, this looks like it's inspired by one of the look you created before. What do you have to say? Uh, yeah, I think Elaine, you're probably right. I think I've done almost every look at this point, um, but I loved this shape. It was really well done. I love the color placement for the cut was really good. Um, the color combo of cool and bright tones, that was very visually appealing. One thing I would like to see differently is the bright root smudge. Um, I, I would like to see it a little bit more even. I get that the contrast and I love the idea of a hot, bright root. I think that's super cool. Um, but however, it wasn't consistent in how it dropped down for me. So it came across a little bit patchy. So the only thing I would like to say is I'd like to see that more evenly dispersed and a little smoother of the transition line between the two. Um, but it was a very precise cut design. So that root would have been more effective if you had seen that. I think that what you did was really amazing. I think you should be very proud of yourself. I most definitely agree with Michelle. I, when I saw this uh, contestant number three, 
a final look for the color, I was like, wow, this person worked very, very hard. I could tell there was a lot of thought that went into it. And I know how challenging it is to go back and to fix the little pieces that are not quite the way you wanted them to be. And the symmetry with the color in the front was very beautiful. So you could see it when it's in the front. It's perfectly symmetrical. I loved it. This color stopped me in my tracks. I was very, uh, very impressed uh, by this. He definitely kicked it up. Uh, the color choices, very Pantone of the year. Um, I, I love the blend. I love the shape. I love the accentuation on the side, the way the hair came down. I thought it was, it was very well done. Very, very impressed. Uh, I would agree too with the other judges about just really work the smoothness um it, it's coming you can see it coming so just practice that the shape was really stunning i love that little jellyfish shape the colors i think the choice of colors was really beautiful they mentioned pantone so that yellow and that gray together and that hot root like everything is very forward thinking in this one which i really like the shape and the cut made sense for everything that was happening with the color i did feel in the 360 when we got to the back that it would just was a little bit dry and the tip that i would have for you is remember that you can blow out that cut as smooth as silk for starters and then even just use your hands to put those little bends in there and touch a hairspray at the end well done number three you did fantastic i could really tell you put a lot of thought into this ahead of time and the thing that really jumped off the screen to me was the synergy of the color choice the color placement and the shape and haircut uh, I think an area to improve upon is pretty much what everyone else has said, and that is to kind of smooth those ends a little bit so you can really see the color. If you want a messy texture, that's not a problem, but do that at the end. Make it straighter first. So we've seen three, two more to go. Let's look at contestant number four. So Stephen, what do you think of this creation? Alan, I thought it was great. Well done, number four. I, I love the, the choice of the gray and the green coming together. That's difficult to do, but I thought you brought it together really well. Um, I think, again, to show off color, you really need shine. And I just think you could have polished it a little bit more so that color really popped. The other thing as a haircut to jump to mind was if you're going to put a line through something, really polish that line because my eye started to move away from the color and it moved towards your lines that could have used a little bit more polish. You could really tell that the cut was done with the color in mind as that finished result. The way the fringe came down, that second section of gray that swooped through. So that was so intentional looking and I really appreciated that. I do agree, though, with the lines that it can be distracting. Uh, one thing I learned is lift your mannequin up high. Bring that way up and look at the whole underneath perimeter line and see if you can clean that a little bit better. The other thing is I think this could have been polished maybe one more time just to make that gray really silver, make that green exactly how you need it to be. There were some areas that I wondered if it was just the lighting or that, um, you know, it couldn't have had one more run through with the color. First, to almost quote Renee Zellweger and Jerry Maguire, you had me at shine. Stunning, sophisticated color choices. Loved that they weren't pure tones, but they were interesting tertiary colors. Placement was perfect for the cut. The color melt in that detail area was awesome. Um, and that one side, I love the way the colors all melted together. It was beautiful. The lines were gorgeous. Um, iridescent, expensive. I could actually see this in a Contessa collection. So really, really well done. Contestant number four, great job. That was beautifully done. Like the other judges said, I loved the color placement. It really made your haircut pop out. Um, and also the lines, yes, those could have been worked a little bit more. But uh, I know how difficult definitely it is also to mix the greens and the silvers together. But I loved it. I love the shine. And uh, next time, just, uh, you know, in terms of like Michelle was saying before, just lift your mannequin head, look at the final touches, but a beautiful piece. Congratulations. Congratulations, contestant number four. I was very impressed with the blend that you had on the cut and the color. It was a job well done. 
Uh, I will agree with the other judges, just more if you're doing lines uh, to really be mindful of how sharp they are. You want to make sure that they're really crisp. And when you're polishing out your ends, really use your blow dryer to, and this goes to all the contestants, to blow dry it out very smooth, heat it up. Use your cool button to close down those ends and just give that shine. Our mentors are giving us tons of great tips, but at some point I would like to see the bloopers as well because those are gonna be very funny. So now let's move on to contestant number five, please. So Michelle, what do you think? Michelle Finlayson. Beautiful work. The shine on this one was gorgeous. I loved the way that the color melted from that deep, dark uh, purple root into that raspberry tone into almost a white pink blonde. I thought that was so beautifully transitioned. The styling and the finishing was really clean. So that shine just made the color come out. Um, I would say it's probably it's a little bit more on the safe side in terms of the styling and finishing or um, you know that, that melt. I feel like this person has probably done this type of work before, but maybe not with this palette or pushing it just that little extra little bit further. But I can only imagine what this would look like smooth and clean and and done in a smoother style. I think it would be equally as beautiful. Well done, contestant number five. I really like what you did. I think I like the top better than I like the underneath. And um, as we just heard before, I think we probably would have got a color that popped a little bit more had we seen that hair that was a little bit smoother. For me, I was just a little bit confused with my eye connecting the color to the haircut to the style. So maybe a tip moving forward is really trying to think of the big picture before you start. So contestant number five, really, really beautiful. It's Instagrammable and appealing. Um, this is also really client friendly for a client that likes to express themselves with hair color. Uh, it looked like great going out dancing hair. So my only critique that it's hard to see the detail of color and, and the perfection of placement when it's curled. So I'd like to say, make sure you're not afraid of stepping back from curls and exploring more defined, smooth shapes when you're trying to express yourself with hair color. But really, really well done. Good job. Contestant number five, uh, beautifully done. The shine was impeccable. I was very impressed with that. Um, it, it, it was a, a little bit confusing. I, I do agree with Stephen, where it was a little bit confusing on... Um, the color with with the the cut and the style um i didn't know exactly where to look at first so just when you are doing the color competition to maybe a, a smoother palette is going to showcase that color a lot more but definitely job well done in terms of the, the shine, the shine was gorgeous. Uh, congratulations, beautiful. I could tell you really have a good arm to work the hair from root to um, end. So beautiful job for that. Most definitely the connection was a little bit surprising. However, both colors were gorgeous. So even the yellow, I mean, sometimes we think it's easy to do a yellow, but your choice of that beautiful butter colored um shade that you decided to do actually reminded me a bit of a sorbet it was yummy at every level so congratulations for that well thank you very much five mentors that was very generous of all of you wow our contestants really stepped it up with this challenge and i'm really glad i don't have to pick the winner once again virtually our contestants got together to share their looks with each other and to chat about how the color challenge went for them. Week two, I had a lot of fun with week two. I created something, I got a little bit out of my comfort zone using bright and bold colors. Uh, my inspiration came from Andy Warhol. He's a famous um, painter, um, a lot of pop art he does. So I wanted to do something where it's something pop art, something bold. Um, and the use of um, what Lisa was saying, um, really saturating your mannequin head. I had a hard time um, going over it. I did have to do it a few times just to get that bright bold color. 
So for week two, I had told everybody that I was going to take what I do over here and put it on my mannequin. And that's what I did. Um, watched out the colors that I had and matched out what would look good with each other. And I kind of went abstract. So my style of art is abstract. So I went in and you could see my, my vertical strokes and how the colors mesh together. And the challenge for me was to take in what the judges had said, but also kind of figure out what I want to do because the judges, one judge said use three colors, one said use no more than three. And so just to focus in my zone and make sure that whatever I was going to do, all the judges were going to like. All right. So challenge two really got my creative juices flowing. That's for sure. Um, I wanted to create something that if you were passing by it on the street, you'd almost do like a double take and be like, oh my God. Um, I really pulled inspiration from being from Saskatchewan, the land of the living skies. So I really chose colors that kind of reminded me of home and the place that has built me pretty much. And I really wanted to do colors that harmonized together and had a well thought balance, but something that was bold, bright and vibrant. Hi, um, I was really inspired by where we are and where I want to be. Um, I did a gray veil to represent now and the tropical colors to represent a peach and vacation and a jellyfish shape to really show off my inspirations and the bright colors emerging out of the gray. Um, so for week two, I uh, took what Michelle said and took inspiration from nature. So my look was really inspired by um, crystals and geodes. So I had kind of that slate gray color in there and then lots of pops of bright coming through kind of in like um, staggered pieces, just kind of, uh, yeah, inspiration from, from geodes and rocks and nature and stuff like that. Um, I had to recolor my mannequin a few times just because I always find I have a challenge with um, doing too much. So I feel like I put way too many colors on it the first time and I just had to bring it down to really make my bright colors uh, stand out. So yeah, I, I did have to go back and rework it a few times, but uh, it was really nice to kind of get the color that I wanted at the end. I found the mentor's feedback so far to be very constructive, but also made me really think about why I'm here, what I need to be doing, and to take a step back and not overthink it and really produce the most creative work that I can possibly produce. I found the judges' feedback very helpful. Um, I actually took in what some of the judges said from the first challenge and went back and actually brushed out my mannequin and said, wow, okay, this looks great. Um, so I think, you know, if this is my first competition. So at the first you're like, oh my God, this is, you know, I'm not doing well and whatever. But then after you go back and you see like, you know what, they're just trying to help you out, figure out what they're saying, take it and then apply it to what you're doing. But I will say one thing, Mr. Moody, I may have not been your cup of tea the first time, but from where I'm from, we drink some chai. So hopefully you like it this time. I'm the type of person to write down everything. So I have a little journal, which I've wrote all the mentors tips and all their little pointers down on. And I've actually found that I've started to incorporate it with what I do behind the chairs. So I thought it is really helpful, really knowledgeable, and I'm so excited to see what they have to say for the next challenges. Um, so the judges um, critiques have really made me kind of rethink what I wanted to do each challenge. I think when I found out I was going to be a part of the challenge and I knew like what each week was going to be, I kind of started and had like a plan for each week already set. And uh, kind of after the first week, I went back and restarted what I was thinking because I feel like I needed to push myself a little bit more. So I'm really learning how to push myself to the absolute limits of my creativity, uh, really find something original and new and great to present each week. I love how the mentors are honest. Um, I'm, they're not afraid to tell me what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. Um, it's really gonna help me come out of my comfort zone and get really into the challenge. And that's gonna help me um, become a better hairstylist. Okay, this is my favorite part of the show. The scores have been tabulated for challenge number two and the winner for the dimensional color challenge is Contestant number three, Alexandra Markovinovich. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Congratulations. You have won the GHD Platinum Plus Ink on Pink Professional Styler and four GHD Ceramic Round Brushes, a total value of over $500.
Wow, big congratulations to you, Alexandria. Okay, now time to introduce the third challenge. Our next challenge is Creative Cut. Our contestants have been given the Kate Mannequin to create an inspiring shape through the use of professional cutting and finishing tools. A classic shape or a modern trend haircut, their choice. The contestants should use professional styling and finishing products to show off their creative cut. The final look will be judged on overall execution, overall fashion look, artistic workmanship, and level of difficulty. To help our contestants create a winning book, our mentors, once again, have some fabulous tips. So my tip for challenge number three, which is the creative cut, is to be open to disconnections uh, that you could have visually connect or not. Uh, a sharp line is always very eye appealing and uh, push your boundaries, have fun. I'm looking for clean lines. If it's meant to be straight, do it with intention. Use your cutting comb to see the balance. If it's on an angle, have it graduate consistently. And so I think that's really important. The last thing I will say is that everything that you do, you want it to really be done um, with intention, meaning if it's going to be textured, if it's going to be choppy, make sure it looks truly choppy like you did that on purpose and not by accident. So here comes my tips for creative cut. My favorite topic, by the way, cutting hair. If you can, when you're working through a haircut, try to do several things that will make your job easier. Number one, cut from short to long. Number two, if you can, pull rather than push. Number three, remember your best friend. Your best friend is the one that we tend to ignore far too much when we work in the salon. And your best friend is the mirror. So my tip for the third challenge is the haircut. Uh, I like strong defined shapes. If we're trying to create a perimeter, think of it as a silhouette. If it was a two dimensional, it would be a silhouette that you would be seeing. I wanna see really strong lines and I wanna see a defined shape. So in your initial cut, you should be doing clean straight lines. Add texture after to finish your cut. And you can use texture to create some detail or a pop somewhere or to make it a little bit more personalized. Um, but for the most part, I really just again, want to see you all step outside the box and be very brave. Have fun. I love it when there is a polarization of uh, textures. So I love it when there is um, part of the hair that is very defined, a very straight geometric shape to the haircut, therefore creating zero elevation to make sure you have nice heaviness at the end of the hair. And then I like to have a textured aspect sort of to bring some um, equalization and um, harmony in the silhouette of the hair. So most definitely go with a nice, sharp, short bang, go with nice texture within the haircut or do the exact opposite. Go for nice texture in the bangs and go for a beautiful, nice geometric heavy line at the bottom. So have fun, get creative and be inspired. Thank you, mentors. Fabulous tips as usual. Well, I know Stephen Moody is very excited about this challenge. So contestants, it's time to get creative with your cuts. To all our viewers, make sure to tune in next Monday at 7 p.m. to see the results of the third challenge and to see what's in store for challenge number four. Please visit abacanada.com slash hair challenge to find out more about the contestants and to vote for your favorite look. See you next week.